In our last episode, we looked at the dreaded duck curve and how difficult it is to get the load curve of your household to match the generation curve from the solar PV on your roof. And the solution we looked at was a battery storage system. But batteries aren't for everybody. They come with a high upfront cost and a very long payback period. So is there anything else that can be done to get those two curves to match better? Well, I'm going to introduce you now to a couple of smart devices that do exactly that. Behind me here is a Zappy smart car charger. It's made by an English company called My Energy. And the difference between this charger and say the one that I would have got from Tesla is that this has a bunch of smarts in it and it can control exactly where the energy is coming from that charges my car. So if we look at the display here, we can see it's set to Eco Plus mode. So it will only use solar power to charge the car. And right now it's got a pink light on the front of it and that's telling me that it's waiting for enough solar energy to be available to start charging the car. And only when there is enough solar energy will it actually commence charging. And if, say, clouds come over and the solar stops generating enough power, then this will suspend its charging until the power level comes up to what is required to charge the car. Now behind me here is a partner device for the Zappi, and this is called an Eddy. And this device here pretty much does the same thing as the Zappi, but instead of controlling the charging of my car, this device is controlling the heating of my hot water. So I have a 3.6 kilowatt hot water service and it is being controlled so that it only gets heated using solar energy from my roof and never grid energy. So just as we saw with the Zappi, this device will sit in an idle state until there's enough energy coming off the roof and only when there's enough energy coming off the roof will it commence heating my hot water service. And so we can see at the moment when we look at the display it's actually heating right now. It's drawing one kilowatt of energy, of power, from the roof and it's using that to heat the hot water service. And so why is this heating and the car's not charging? Well, it comes down to priorities. So I can control the priorities of what gets heated or what gets charged first. And I can do that in this very handy little app. And you can see here looking at the My Energy app that that amount of energy being sent out to the hot water service via the Eddy device. And so that's charging at 1.8 kilowatts. And so far it's used 1.12 kilowatt hours of energy. It'll probably be fully heated when it's used about three kilowatt hours. But one important thing to note here is that this, the element in the hot water service is a 3.6 kilowatt element. And yet right now it's only drawing 1.6 kilowatts. And this is where the Eddy is such an important device because what the Eddy can do is actually throttle the rate at which the hot water service works. So if the eddy wasn't there, the hot water service would either be on or it would be off. And if it was on, it would be drawing 3.6 kilowatts. And if it was off, it would be drawing nothing. So that would mean that if you just had a device that turned the hot water service on, it's going to draw 3.6 kilowatts, which means right now, because there's only one and a half kilowatts coming off the roof, it would actually have to draw another one and a half or whatever, two kilowatts, of power from the grid and that's exactly what it would do it would start using grid power so the beauty of these smart devices like the zappy and the eddy is that they can throttle what's going on with the load to ensure that that power stays under the generated power from the roof and thus it matches the load to the generation curve so the car is sitting there paused at the moment because there's just not enough energy for it to charge unless it went to the grid and it's set up so it won't do that. 
So it's got a little, little pause sign, and if I click on that, we can see that at the top it says waiting for a surplus. So it's sitting there waiting until there's surplus energy available for it to charge. That will either happen because the eddy is fully charged and now that energy is available to the car, or it will happen in a few hour, in an hour or two when the sun gets higher and there's more energy coming off the roof and there's enough to charge both the eddy and the car. Now, a couple of hours have gone by since I started shooting and you can see now looking at the zappy, it's got a green light which tells me that it's actually charging the car now. And if we look at the display here, we can see that it's charging the car at 5.2 kilowatts at the moment. And all of that's coming from the rooftop solar. So we can see a sun on the left hand top corner. That's the rooftop solar coming into the house. And then we can see the charging going to the car at 5.1 kilowatts. And so far it's put 1.79 kilowatt hours into the battery. So it hasn't been charging for long and it'll still keep charging now. It'll take probably a couple of hours to get up to fully charged. Now I don't have to come out to this box to look at that all the time because I can view all this information on the app and I'll show you that now. Opening the My Energy app, I can see exactly what's going on with these My Energy devices, the Zappy and the Eddy. Now the Eddy is over here on the left hand side. It's got a little tick box next to it. If I click on that, I can see at the top of the screen it tells me that the maximum temperature has been reached already for my hot water. And just below that I can see that it's consumed 3.46 kilowatt hours of energy to reach that maximum temperature. And it's now at a maximum, it'll hold that temperature overnight so there's no problem, I'll get a nice hot shower tomorrow. If I go back to the front screen, we can see that because that's now fully heated, the energy is going from the house to the zappy and charging the car. If I click on the car, I can see that it's currently charging at seven kilowatts. And so far it's added 4.3 kilowatt hours of energy to the battery. So if I now go and have a look at the car app, the Tesla app, I'll be able to see and hear what's happening with the car. And it's telling me at the top here that I've got 49% of state of charge in the battery. And down the bottom here, it's charging right now at six kilowatts or 30 amps. It's, it's toggling a little bit between six and seven. Seven kilowatts is the maximum rate of charge you can charge the Model 3 at from a wall charger on a single phase. So that's pretty good. And if we look back at the top of the screen there, it tells me that it's 49% state of charge. And just under that, it tells me how long it has to go to reach the set charge limit that I've set. So I've set a charge limit of 61% because I don't drive very far each day and it's better for battery health not to charge it too high. So 61% is what I'm aiming for. And it's telling me that it will take an hour and 20 minutes to reach that state of charge. Now, if I flick to the left, swipe to the left, I, it, it takes me to the battery app, so the app for my power wall. So on here, I can see what's coming off the roof. At the top there, 7.8 kilowatts is coming off my roof right now, which is very good because my system only has a peak of 8 kilowatts. That's the rating of the inverter. So it's almost at peak right now. And if we look down the bottom here, you can see that the battery state of charge is 100%. So what's happened this morning is the battery was about 30%, I think, when I got up in the morning. So it's fully charged up now. And having reached its fully full state of charge, then the hot water system got heated up. And when it got fully heated, now the car is charging. So everything is being charged in a particular order. And if I go back to the Zappy or the My Energy app for a moment, I can set the order, so if you see that the eddy is on the left-hand side of the screen and it's vertically above where the car is, so this is telling the, the um, my energy ecosystem that I want the water to heat before the car charges. That's the priority I've set. And I can easily change that. If I just push and hold on one of them, I can 
just swing them around and change the priority of how they how they get charged or heated. So it's very flexible, this system. And, you know, it, it means you can dial up whatever works best for you. So now the car is charging and it will be prioritised over the hot water. So if I left this how it is, tomorrow the car would charge up before the hot water heated. So I'm going to change that back because that's not how I want it. So I'll flick those back over again and then that will do exactly what I need it to do. The last thing I want to show you is this app and this is the app that comes with the inverter. And it shows me here the load curve and the generation curve. So right now what we're looking at, this orange coloured curve, is the generation coming off my roof and it's, as you can see, the classic bell curve. It's just around the middle of the day now, so it's peaked and it'll start heading down the other side from now until nightfall. So you can see a lovely bell curve there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on this switch down the bottom so you'll see my load curve. And what do you notice? They exactly overlap. So the load has been shaped by those smart devices so that it only uses the solar energy that's available. It doesn't export to the grid and it doesn't import from the grid. Having said that, I do note that if I turn on the grid switch down the bottom, there is a slight little export there around about 12.30. And that would have been because I was, uh, I was actually changing the settings on the car charger. So for a brief moment, I was not charging the car and that meant there was a slight excess of energy that's gone out to the grid. But normally you wouldn't see that. And it's only a very small little spike there. It probably only amounts to maybe, you know, a kilowatt hour or less. So I'm not concerned about that. The main thing to note here is that overall, those two curves exactly correlate with each other. And thus, I'm getting the maximum value out of the solar panels. And this will happen with or without a battery. So this is the best option if you don't want to buy a battery but you want to make sure you maximise the value from your solar panels. If you have an EV, get yourself a smart wall charger. It doesn't have to be the same brand as this. There are other brands on the market like Wallbox, but make sure that what you do get is capable of shaping that load curve so it fits under the generation curve. If you're going to pair it with a hot water device, then you probably want to stay with the one brand because they really need to talk to each other. You saw when I was on the app and the phone, I was able to change the priority of how those two devices work. And you could only do that if they talk to each other. The Zappi costs about $1,200, so it's not cheap. Uh, the Eddy costs about $800. So all up, I spent about $2,000 on this solution, which is a fair bit of money, but you will get a payback because you'll save a lot of money in the way you charge your car and the way you heat your hot water. And $2,000 is a lot less than buying a battery system. The, the company, My Energy, are very easy to deal with and the products are brilliant. My only criticism would be that when it was being installed, the boxes ship straight from Britain where they're made and they were set up for British conditions. And my electrician, who'd never seen one before, struggled a little bit with changing the settings. But he rang the support line in Melbourne and got brilliant support straight away, and it was all resolved very quickly. And since then, I've had no issues with it. I've had them for six months now. They've been going great. Another question you may be, that may be on your mind is what happens if I need to override these devices? For example, if I had a load of guests turn up on my doorstep this afternoon and I wasn't expecting them and they were going to stay over, I might want to make sure my hot water is fully heated. Well, that's easy. I can push an override button and when I push that button, it will use grid energy to heat the water. Likewise with the Zappi, if I suddenly had to make a long trip and the battery wasn't fully charged or it was quite low, I can press a fast charge button and the Zappi will override all its logic and just pull energy from the grid to charge the car. So there's no issue if, if you find yourself in those unexpected situations. 
So that's it for today. I hope this has been useful information to you. And if you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments section. I always read the comments and I always reply to people. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. But until then, enjoy your electric life.